Good evening and welcome to the Gratitude uh, webinar today. We will focus to bring values to all our clients, our advisors, and also to our community through knowledge sharing. I am Lim Renan. I'm the CEO of Gratitude Life and Takafo Insurance. Welcome to uh, our webinar today. <laughs> and I'm happy today to see more than, uh, well, I'm looking at more than uh, 50 to 60 people have joined this webinar and then more is coming in. Thank you very much. You know, uh, Dr. Shim is here. Thank you. Uh, Lawrence, thank you for coming. Maggie, Mandy. And then there's, there's a lot more. I cannot mention each one of them, right? So, today's uh, seminar, uh, welcome to the seminar, the webinar. Today's webinar, we're going to discuss about my COVID positive experience and how to make a claim with a AIA medical insurance, okay? So sometimes, if we look at the COVID situation now, the question that we ask ourselves often is like this. Now, what, number one, what should I do if I'm COVID positive? This is a question a lot of people ask. What should I prepare before going into quarantine? And how can I protect my family from contracting COVID from me? And the third question a lot of people were asking is, who is going to pay the medical bills for my COVID-19 medical care? Do we have a solution to this? So today we are very fortunate to have two guests with me. They are Nick Ng. Let's give a warm welcome applause to Nick. Thank you, Nick, for coming in. A gratitude long-time client and a COVID-19 survivor. Thank you, Nick, for coming in. Nick, say hi to all the audience, Nick. Hi. <laughs> Great to have you, Nick. And we have Mei Wong, gratitude office manager who handles all insurance claims and she is herself a COVID-19 uh, survivor. Hi, May. Thank you for coming in, May. So for all our clients out there, if you are with us for some time, you will know, you will have heard May's voice before over the phone, right? May is our long-term office manager that handles all claims and customer service. So our guests today will share their experience on their recovery, all right, through from COVID-19. Now, we will do an in-depth discussion about their feelings, their emotional experience, how to get about making an insurance claims for COVID-19. So I believe all this topic, it is quite important for all of you, just in case this happens to you. So thank you, Nick and May, for coming in and joining me today. And we have a lot of to discuss today. May, say hi to all the audience today. Hi. Yes, we are still having people coming in. If you are... If you have friends who wants to join, please invite them, send them the link that we send you. They should be able to join us, right? So, Nick, would you like to start off uh, our, our session today? Okay. Yes. So I, li I look a bit yeah. blur on the camera. I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, so Nick, my first question for you, Nick. Now, you have your dad down with COVID first, right? What yes. happened, Nick? Uh, I think in um, dad got it somewhere in end of uh, January, just before Chinese New Year. So one evening I was back um, having dinner. He told me he had uh, having a diarrhea for about the second day already. So I didn't think much about it, but he looked a bit pale. Uh, so Chinese said they mean intense hang. So I had some uh, the RTK test kit at home, the COVID test kit. So I took one out and for the first time using it. So I tried it. Uh, and uh, showed uh, there was two lines, so it showed it was positive. So I wasn't really sure whether it was it was accurate or not, but I called anyway, just to be safe, I called my friend who had uh, COVID recently and asked her what I did to do and stuff. So I just prepared um, uh, vitamins and supplements and asked my dad to self-quarantine first. Then immediately the next morning, I uh, also got the contact to make an appointment with uh, drive-in uh, drive uh, COVID vaccination uh, place so I actually was that my dad's details and took him there. Um, so took him there for the test. Uh, then uh, took him back, continue resting. Then uh, the next day morning, they texted me to tell me my dad's uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, COVID result was positive. So yeah, so immediately we moved him. Uh, we had another unit that was uh, empty, so we isolated him to a, another unit and. Uh, pass him all the supplements uh, about the oximeter, which is uh, to measure your uh, blood level, is uh, blood oxygen level, and also the thermometer. Yeah, the two important things. 
Right. So your your dad had had the COVID nineteen. Uh, I mean, how did he contract the COVID nineteen? Do you know the source of it? Uh, he doesn't know for sure, but the only place he went to was uh, his bank, and if later found out that the bank manager and staff there uh, in that branch was uh, COVID positive during that time, my dad got it. So most probably is from he guess most probably is from there. Yeah. Yep. So it's very bank. contagious, right? You just go to a bank and you get it. Yeah. Right. Right. So I just like to ask May. May you were diagnosed of COVID nineteen in April this year. Yeah. Tell her where did you contract it and how did you find out? Close contact with dinner with my one of my friend. So what and did you do? How did you have close contact? Dinner went out for dinner. All right, tell Not us. At home, hmm. tak jaga baik, but tak dengar government say. Let's <laughs> <laughs> buy out for dinner. Then after that, receive a call from my friend. They told me, uh, he he got fever three day. Then after hmm. that, they said you better go and do the test. I'm COVID positive. So then that time, I really faster go and do the test to in Subang Jaya Medical Center. The next day, I get the call, missed call from SJMC, mentioned mm-hmm. COVID positive. Okay. Yeah. So how did you feel when you were, uh, when, 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 when the, uh, what do you call this, uh, the hospital calls you and tell you you have COVID positive, you have COVID-19 positive? Like suddenly... <laughs> It's blur already. Don't know what to do. Uh, first th- call Limran, uh, no? call my boss. Boss, I'm COVID positive. So sorry. Mentioned to all my colleagues like that. So from there, okay, you went into quarantine yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. So let me just ask, ask Nick. No, Nick, after your father had COVID nineteen, right? And then, yes. um, I think uh. Another family members uh, also uh, was contracted with it. Then after that, you actually yourself is contracted with COVID nineteen. Now, did you contract COVID nineteen from your father, or did you had it from somewhere else? Uh, no, it was uh, my dad got it in the late uh, January before Chinese New Year. I got it only in April, uh, early April. We uh, same as May went for dinner uh, with a group of friends, uh, only for an hour and a half. <laughs> so we had dinner, I think it was a Monday night. Then Wednesday, we got a text from again one of the friends saying that, oh, um, I was just diagnosed with COVID positive. So um, all of us got a bit, um, uh, what do you call that? What's the word? All of us got a bit, uh, uh, we went to uh, get a test. Uh, so I did again the RTK test uh, at home, uh, but came out negative. So a few of us came out negative on the RTK test. But again, next day, uh, another two friends uh, who got the PCR test say that, uh, oops, they contracted it as well. So immediately uh, on, the, on the Friday, I made the appointment to go to uh, see my GP uh, and to do a PCR test. So on the Friday itself, after doing it, uh, going back home, I was getting a bit of a fever. So I thought, uh, looks like high chance that I really got it. John <laughs> John. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I started the same thing because my, my uh, sort of know what to do. So I took all the, the oximeter, the stuff, put it in my room, uh, self-quarantine. Uh, so next day, yeah, the doctor texted me, uh, uh, Nick, you're COVID positive. So I said, okay, what should I do? So don't worry first, uh, give you some medication. So he uh, prescribed uh, Aphromectin and some antibiotics uh, to me. So I got my someone to pick it up for me and send it to my house. Um, so the first few days I was uh, talking to him, uh, giving an update every day. So I was quite lucky. Then I also had a few friends uh, who was admitted to Glen Eagles already. Uh, mm. uh, they tested positive. So I was also talking to them uh, what, what sort of treatment they were getting and stuff. So um, the first few days was quite horrible. Um, I had a reoccurring fever, uh, chills, uh, diarrhea. And I think... Coming to the second day or third day, I really uh, lost my sense of uh, smell and also uh, bitterness, very uh, taste bitterness in the tongue. So there was no taste. So I couldn't eat for for maybe a week or so. The first week, couldn't really eat anything. And mm. I just just had some Milo and uh, some bread as and then, then uh, uh, try to sleep as much as I can. Yeah. So were you weak then? Weak, right? Do you feel? Uh, the first four or five days I was weak. The sixth day I was actually getting a bit better. In fact, I was trying to do some exercises at home and to sweat it off. Mm-hmm. But only thing that once I, uh, during the evening time, my the, the fever will, con- will continue uh, to come back. I was taking average, I think, between four to six 
rounds of Panadol a day. So uh, I asked my friend who was in the hospital and they told the doctor about it. So they said uh, the doctor's advice was I should uh, come in and get admitted. So yeah, uh, sort of arranged for uh, the only, when uh, me and another friend admitted together with the last two spots at that time in the hospital for us. So we're quite lucky. So once I reached, uh, we drove ourselves, I drove myself there, parked my car in the car park, immediately went to emergency, passed them my credit card and my COVID report. Then when I reached the hospital, actually my blood pressure actually dropped. I was feeling a bit dizzy. So they took me into emergency immediately and gave me grips uh, and steroids uh, immediately that, that evening. So the first four days was hard, right? Then you were immediately... Yeah. So the let me body. just yeah let me just ask May May your symptom was a bit different right May, uh, your symptoms uh, tell us about your symptom for the first four days what happens to you? Actually, I no fever. I'm so lucky. No so throat. I just like lost smell and diarrhea. Then mm. so far I no eat any Panadol, no any medicine. When that time just take took vitamin. That's all only. When. I think should be maybe I think positive. So to say I we say la be positive, be happy a bit la like that. So uh, you you're telling me the other day your 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 taste and your smell went off, right? Yeah. The I when the fourth day, uh, the fifth day, I just lost the smell and diarrhea only. Start. Mm -hmm. Before that, nothing happened. Yeah. Okay, so May is also orang Kelantan, ah, so jangan boleh cakap bahasa Melayu. So we will try to actually do this because we have a lot of Malay, <laughs> and also uh, uh, um, and the Malaysian all knows Malay, right? <laughs> orang Kelantan tak so balik Kelantan. We will try to mix risau. our language. Yeah, orang Kelantan, ah. Ah, okay. maksud tak balik Kelantan, jangan risau. Yes. So May again with you. I just want to ask you after four days, five days, right? Then you decide to go to Maeve's. Why? You are not required to required to go. You uh no Maibs no. KKM tak panggil masuk Maibs kan? Kenapa you nak masuk Maibs? Actually, it's compulsory nak masuk. Actually, uh nak masuk Maib is KL area and Selangor area is different. If KL address ah, uh, you no need to go to Maib. You can guarantee at home. But if Selangor address ah, uh, how address is compulsory. You need to go Maib. They don't care. Maybe you at home already eleven day. Or how once you cannot confirm it's COVID positive, they mm -hmm. need you to go to my aid because they they take sa you okay get okay when you confirm it's COVID they need you to go there like that mm -hmm. even you not fever because they scared you think negative this and that maybe when you masuk masuk tu ada orang jaga got nurse doctor it's better lah for me right now you ask me right ah if you go my aid it better you stay at home quarantine. So going Maeve's is better to stay in home. Why? Huh? Yes. Ada doctor, ada nurse. Jangan risau. Makan pun ada orang jaga. Jangan risau. Three, three lunch, lunch, dinner, breakfast, semua ada orang jaga. Jangan risau. Ada kawan lagi. Banyak kawan. Kawan baru. So I'll come back to you later about Maeve's. Huh? Hmm. Now I just want to talk to Nick. Nick, how was your experience at Glen Eagles? Private. So that's why today we get both of you to come, right? There's a comparison from private and Maeve's. <laughs> Both sides also we want to know how was your experience throughout the ordeal, uh? How was it in in Glen Eagles? I must say it was quite pleasant because from the time I I got in and um, immediately after they uh, they gave me the uh, grips and everything they put me into uh, isolation. All of us had isolation rooms, so uh, actually at the time half of the ward was filled with my friends and already because uh, <laughs> few of us had COVID at the same time. So. It was pretty easy. The doctor comes in, uh, of course, uh, my, they, they measure two things called your uh, blood CRP level and your ferritin level, which is quite important. So my doctor said that uh, it shows uh, I have an infection in my uh, uh, started, body setting, have an infection and um, getting some slight uh, uh, infection to my lungs as well. So they prescribed me heavy doses of steroids, uh, mm. two rounds a day of steroids uh, together with a vitamin C grip as a supplement. So other than that, uh, they, they do take your blood test every day uh, together with a chest uh, x-ray. And the doctor comes in every uh, morning and gives me a call in the afternoon to update what's, our, uh, what's my condition. So other than that, uh, I must say hospital is very relaxed. Uh, that's uh, broadband, there is uh, 
cable TV, so you can watch Netflix, I could do webinars, even talking <laughs> on uh, doing a bit of work after the second or third day, and uh, you know, you have free meals, and after one week of not eating, after going to the hospital, right, my appetite sort of uh, came back, so we were quite lucky, we had friends uh, sending food almost every day, or my driver would buy something for me uh, to supplement the extra meal even, so yeah, even though I lost a uh, few kilos, but I was eating quite well already in the hospital. So basically, the 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 the, the private hospital is taking care, taking well of all yeah. The patients. I would have said, um, if I uh, turn back time, I would have uh, actually admitted myself much earlier to be able to get well faster. How many of you were in the hospital, Nick, from the dinner? Um, in hospital, maybe about five of us. <laughs> in the same hospital. <laughs> One dinner, five in Glen Eagles. Yeah, okay. five. In Eagles. Yeah. So it's terrible, right? Now, May, can you tell us about Maips? You know, a lot of people say Maib's experience is bad, you know, wow, Maib's are very terrible, uh, not clean and all that. Tell me your experience. Macam mana dekat Maib's? Itu bagus ke tidak? Bagus. Baik. Bagus. Hmm. Okay. Boleh guna duit. Jangan risau. Can Macam spend money. Ada? Dekat situ ada kiosk yang you can buy some food like Maggie, some coffee, latte. Uh, for I, admit, I go to Maib four day, three night, like check-in hotel. After when discharge. They asked me, can go back, announcement my name. I said, huh? So fast, ah? can go can go back already. Ah? Four day, three night only. Well. Why you don't want to go back? Ah? Don't want to go back. Because I think I'm not recover yet. I heard in my ears, ah, nobody need to wear a mask, right? Everybody just walk around like that. Actually, some um, cannot say like that. Lah. They are still wear mask Because this one will take care about another pay, uh, parent that no can COVID, right? So we got wear mask one, don't worry. What is the youngest age you saw in my age? Huh? Well, a lot for college student. I think around ah. the age 21, around 25 years old. That time is a mostly Chinese for April that time. Mm, okay, mm. okay. So it is important that now we know that if you are COVID-19 positive, mm. do not have the, the kind of thinking that, you know, yo, jangan masuk my age, I do, throw the back. No, jangan. The, it's Clean, right? It's very clean. Bose, uh, boleh, boleh tahan lah. Food. Ha. Doctors are there to handle you. And then, ada kawan tak? Ada. Ramai. Ramai kawan. Ha. New friend. New friends, ah. <laughs> Now, so tell me, uh, uh, Nick, come back to Glen Eagles. Now, how much was uh, your medical bills uh, cost you? Uh, mine... Um... I think when discharge, I was there for a week, so six nights. Uh, it was slightly below nineteen thousand. Then um, after I was discharged, I went for back for post treatment, so probably about twenty thousand or in. But you have no side effects, and it's still twenty thousand. Uh, hospital prices. <laughs> I actually was among a, a few of us. I'm actually one with the shortest uh, time staying there. I had another friend who stayed for. He had a bit of difficulty breathing. He stayed for maybe three weeks and the cost was almost 80,000. And I had an, an other friend who stayed the longest uh, over a month, 50 days, uh, and is in the range of 200, uh, 200 plus thousand. 200 plus thousand? Yeah, I think two, 250 or 260 to be exact. In Glen Eagles? In Glen Eagles, yes. It's a quarter of a million. Yes, a quarter of a million. That's a lot of money, Nick. It uh, wasn't right. me. Mine was paid by AIA. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, then comes the experience, right? May is the one that handles your claims. Now tell yes, us, how, yeah, what, what did you do uh, on your side to facilitate that claim? To facilitate that claim? Uh, okay, because uh, I waited for, uh, because I had to go and see the doctor about two weeks after for the post, uh, uh, post discharge. Uh, so I waited for that. Then uh, May already sent me email. Between that, email me the claim forms that I needed to pass to the doctor. And uh, so when uh, when my uh, post uh, treatment was done, I passed it the uh, form to the doctor. It took about a few days to fill up because it was quite busy. Pass it back to me. So together with a set of all the hospital bills, uh, send it to over to uh, gratitude office for them to do the claims. Mm -hmm. So I think we we uh, we collected your medical bills from you it was paid and claimed right it was not done through a gl it yeah. was yeah i was i paid first then i got the but it was very quick uh i think from the time i passed it to your office 
uh, to approval. I got a text like, I think on a Friday, it was only three days after I passed the documents to your office and they said the claim was approved. And on Monday morning, I checked my bank account, the money was already in. Right. Thank you so much, Big. Thank you for saying that, you know. So for all the audience out there, if you are an AIA client or you are not an AIA client, you have to understand one thing. Uh, the medical insurance under AIA right, covers COVID-19. So Nick is a, a real life uh, uh, example that he went in Glen Eagles and came out and, and we did the claim for them. Now May, our office manager, is the one that handles all the claims for our clients. May, tell us when you're handling uh, uh, Nick's COVID-19 claims, uh, what are the procedures you did for him to get a clean medical claims? What are the procedures? Step by step, how do you do it for him? Uh, first time, like Nick say, I send the claim form, important claim form. I need to all, you, customer need to prepare for all the original receipt, submit, return back to AIA and all the report. So when once we receive everything, we will do the scanning, then we will, we will submit into the AIA. So this time mm. I was quite so happy, three days can count in for Nick. So happy actually, because when in my heart that time I say, because the first time, first claim for COVID claim yes. for gratitude. So after that, yes. you are the first cases. I also don't know how many days they will process everything when settled for you, you know. When you say three days, wow, I'm so happy. I'm lucky number one, yeah? <laughs> yeah, lucky number one. Correct. Right. Uh, we, don't, we don't want, we, we, we actually don't pray that there's more. Lah, huh? We just pray that all of you are healthy, right? Yes. But uh, if, you, if you are sick, all our clients out there, if you are sick and you need medical help, if you have an AIA medical insurance, you, of course, we will do it for you. But just, just for all our audience out there, if you have an AIA medical card and, and, and you don't have anybody to help you in your claims, Call any of our live advisors. Call the guy who actually invited you to the webinar. We are more than happy to help. Now, May, I just want to check with you again. What are the things uh, to actually to look out for? Means to be careful during a clean process. You because, know, what uh, should they be? Mm. Because some is a carefully is the receipt, the original receipt, but return back to AIA. Some customer they were miss up about this important part. They will give you for photocopy. Sometimes because they are think. Photocopy enough for to AIA, but is submit to be a claim file claim. All the report, uh, especially the original receipt, must submit into the AIA. Like mm -hmm. that. Mm. Okay. Thank God, Nick so, help me. Mm. All original receipt, right? Make, yeah, original receipt and the report. Yeah. So we do have experience that sometimes clients, you know, forgot where they put the original receipt. They put yeah. in one handbag, the other handbag. They don't know which one. And then we have to go back to get a duplicate receipt. Yeah. becomes a problem, you know. So uh, thank you, Nick, for, for preparing, you know, the documents. No problem. Uh, but don't worry about it, uh, you know. In gratitude, gratitude, customer service is very, very important. Just now I like it when May says, uh, I'm so happy when Nick's claim uh, came out so fast. It was so clean, you know, and came out. Yes. You know, what do we, you know, Nick, what do we call this, you know? We call it a happy moment at, at, at gratitude. You know, every, every week we, during our agency meeting, uh, we have a happy moment session where we share uh, between all the life advisors and also between our people, we will share uh, between us what did you do, one, one, uh, one gesture of kindness that you do this week for our clients. And May did share that when, when we did the claim for you and we were so happy that it is done. You know, it is a life proof. It can be claimed. Now, I just want to check with you. Nick, after you're discharged from Glen Eagles, right? What are the side effects after being discharged? Um, yeah, even I was discharged, I still hadn't regained my uh, taste buds yet and my sense of smell. So it took about probably another two to three weeks after I was discharged. And uh, because I cycle uh, regularly um, uh, during the weekends uh, outdoor, so I found that uh, the first the, during the first two or three outings, it was still tough. I was... Uh, less than halfway through my usual distance, I was really uh, starting the runoff of, uh, of breath. So I was doing a lot of exercises, even uh, after I recovered, I uh, did swimming, I go for a walk, a bit of jog in the morning, I do a bit of exercise or, 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 or cycling. So to uh, to try to regain uh, my, so probably I'm maybe 90%, 80 to 90% uh, back to original now, and it's been uh, three months. Yeah. So there's no, there's no lung scarring for you, right? You are basically quite clean. Um, it came out quite clean. Yeah, it was my. I was quite lucky because I didn't have any breathing difficulties. Uh, uh, mine was mostly uh, infection on the uh, 
because our body was immune system was fighting against uh, COVID. So it was mostly that. So uh, during my post, uh, that's why I only had one session with a doctor after I was discharged and he said, it's good, don't have to come back anymore. So for me, you have no side effect as well, right? No. Oh, you fantastic. just like tired only, but so far, okay. I remember the Monday that May, May came back to work, right? We bought fried chicken in the <laughs> office for lunch and she was so happy. <laughs> I'm not so lucky like, because the market cannot call bread food. Wah. I you call her so many times, you know, three or four times. I say, Can I send you something? She keeps telling me, Cannot send, cannot send, my use cannot okay. send. <laughs> now, so I want to talk about the other aspect of COVID 19, not just the physical, but the emotional impact. How did socially your family, your friends, your colleague, your neighbors treat you during that, this, these difficult times? Nick, tell us. How, how did your condo people feel or your friends feel after they know that you had COVID-19? I think because uh, the first time that my father got it, it was a bit more of a shock. And I think we were also the first family who got it in the building. So some people knew about it. So it wasn't, the feeling wasn't so good the first time. Uh, I mean, uh, some people know our unit number and stuff. So, but I mean, mostly they were, they were saying greetings and stuff. So we just left it as such. And uh, when I got it, um, I didn't care because a lot of my friends really had it. <laughs> it was getting quite common already to have COVID, so it didn't really bother. <laughs> so people are understanding, right? They are not yeah, people are understanding. too much of taboo. But for May, I think May had a bit of an emotional problem during that, that first four or five days quarantining at home, right? Tell us your experience. Did, did anything, you know, did your family, is, is your family supportive? Is your friend supportive? <laughs> because it's a uh, guy and woman, it's kind of COVID in the different, but when I kind of that time, confirm it's COVID positive, I will cry until the fifth day, every day. Because I say, why? Uh? Why? Uh? Because I, I I'm cannot at home one, you know. I, every day I need to go to like outside, but it's a uh, five, fifth day in at home. I totally like blur and very emotion. A little bit was go my husband. May mention and I will every day call my parents, uh, but thank God my parents, they were already take care about me. They every day give me a call, morning call, this and that. So that's just only like that. So thank you, May. Now we're going to do uh, something fun for the audience, right? We're going to do a poll. A poll means a survey now. Now, can you just, uh, uh, can all this, just one question, simple question. Do you know anyone from the audience, uh, from all these people who is joining us, more than 60 of them, do you know anyone who is COVID-19 positive? Could you just answer that? You know, I want to see whether from the audience, anybody knows anybody who is COVID-19. So uh, let's get our guys to put it up. Yes, the poll is up already. Could you just answer it? You know, uh, just press yes or no and submit. We just want to see uh, how's the polls going. All right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, for, for our, uh, for Ho, uh, Vincent, can you please uh, put down the post result later on? Yes, and uh, we, we will welcome all questions, uh, and we can see that quite a lot of people are actually ask some questions. If you have any questions, please put it down on the chat or Q&A. We will actually try to answer them later on, okay? So the first question, do you know anybody who is COVID-19 positive? Question number two, do you know anyone was hospitalized at a private hospital due to COVID-19. So, uh, Vincent, can you put up the poll number two? Let them answer that, uh, you know. Yes, Siti, no, Amira, yes, we will answer your question uh, other than original receipt. Later on, we will come back with a, with a question and answer, right? So, poll number two, Vincent, can you put it up? Let us answer that. Yes, poll number two, do you know anyone who was hospitalized at a private hospital? Yes, I know Nick. <laughs> <laughs> and and his gang I think some of your friends also I know right you know so can I just ask you one question Nick besides you getting a claim from your COVID-19 did your friends get their claims um, I think uh, there was another friend who had uh, managed to he didn't claim the full portion only because the insurance doesn't cover uh, COVID but uh, for certain expenses uh, he did pay out but he didn't share how much out of the total bill was paid out to them so the 80,000 guy didn't get the full claim la, a portion no. only yeah a portion 5,000 10,000 
something around there. I didn't ask in particular. It should be around. So the two hundred sixty thousand guy. Uh, I think he didn't have insurance, so wasn't in. Uh, yeah. Wasn't yeah. Wasn't paid for the other guy. So we would actually explain to you the claim procedure later on. How actually to do this now? So. For Nick and uh, uh, May, thanks for, for uh, uh, giving us an in-depth uh, discussion about your experience uh, on COVID-19. And I'm sure that uh, you are now waiting, you know, you, are, you uh, Nick and May, is now waiting to be vaccinated very soon, right? So to our audience, don't go anywhere. We will give you some time. Please ask us questions. I can say, I can see Maggie is asking us questions. Uh, good. Please put down all your questions. We will answer. We will try to answer them later on. Now, to all our guardians, don't go anywhere. We will give you some time to write down all your questions for our guests, and we will try to answer them uh, in 10 minutes' time, okay? So for now, i just like to do a little bit of an explanation how the medical insurance works, okay? So there is a saying in our community now, there are only two things that is certain. Number one, uh, it, used to be, it used to be death and taxes. Uh, that, that is certain, right? <laughs> death and taxes. Now it's COVID or vaccine. Whichever come first, it will eventually get you, right? So we need to prepare for these two things before COVID hit us or our family. And number one, you need to get registered and get vaccinated. For anybody, all the audience out there, if you have, you should do your vaccination registration right now. Now, I've done my vaccination with AZAC, uh, AstraZeneca. I'm the first uh, batch that took the brave step to take an AZAC uh, vaccination and I have no side effect. I'm waiting for my second dose in five more weeks now. Vaccination is crucial not for you to avoid to get infected with COVID, but it definitely can help you to avoid ICU and death. All right? There's a, a study has shown 99% of people who has vaccinated do not die from COVID. So get vaccinated, believe in science, and not fake news and YouTube videos. Okay? Now, your medical insurance, the golden question is now. Are you 100% sure and fully know that your medical insurance that you're currently covering, uh, that you have now, has COVID-19 coverage? So let us see a poll again. Let us just play another game. Let us pull out the poll, poll, poll again. Vincent, can you pull up poll number three? How many of you actually know your medical insurance covers COVID-19 fully? Let me see. Does your medical insurance cover COVID-19 in private hospital? If it's yes, you say yes, it's covered. If it's no, you say it doesn't cover. If you're not so sure, just press, I'm not so sure. I'm very sure. For me, it is yes. My AIA policy covers COVID-19, right? Okay. So now, do you know that currently in Malaysia, the only insurance company that fully covers medical expenses for COVID-19 at private hospital is AIA? The only company that does that. Now, if you choose to go private like Land Eagles, like me, example, AIA can fully cover your medical expenses from category three to category five infection. So let me just explain what is category three, uh, uh, category one to five. Uh. Now category one, category one COVID-19 infection means you're COVID positive. Dua palang lah, Nick, two strike. Dua palang, right? No symptom at all, very, very mild. You can do home quarantine. Category two is mild symptom. Like me, slight fever, slight cough, you know, uh, the oxygen level is still over 98. No need ventilator. Can quarantine at home or quarantine at my hips? Category 3 is prolonged fever. You need medical attention. You have slight breathing difficulty. Like Nick, he needs hospitalization. It's called Category 3. Category 4 means you have difficulty breathing. You need ventilator. Some of them has to do induced coma to help them breathe. The lung scarring is extensive. The lung function gone half. They need life support, they need ICU. So this is a category four. The last thing is category five. All these big, big rich men are died, all died of category five. Category five means all of the birth of category four. You cannot breathe, you need ventilator. With one more thing, you have multiple organ failure. I think Nick, your friend uh, who spent 260,000 is category five, right? Um, yeah, around four to five, I think he was somewhere. Four to five there. like that. Yeah. If not, uh, he cannot be staying in the hospital for 50 days. One, yeah. Long-term damage. Category 5 means long-term damage to vital organs like liver, kidney. Yeah. I have a friend who went into the ICU right, for uh, 52 days. ICU 52 days. Uh, he came out nearly like 60 days later. Uh. Mm. His liver is gone. His kidney failed. Today, he is on dialysis. 
That is how bad COVID-19 can infect and adjust, affect your body. So what is the cost of private medical care? Category, category 1 and 2, you don't need. Lah. It's actually home quarantine only. Or MIPS quarantine. May, did you pay anything for MIPS or not? No. Did they give you ang pao when you leave? No. <laughs> no, so right. So category 1 and 2, no hospital, no medical care needed, home quarantine. It is the category 3. It is 5 to 10 days private hospital. It will cost like Nick 15 to 25,000. Category 4, private hospital, uh, normally, typically it stays about 14 to 25 days. It is about 50 to 120,000. For category 5, 20 days and above to 45 days to 2 months, it can cost you from 100,000 to, uh, to, uh, to 500,000, half a million. So you might ask, you know, there's a lot of questions out there now I can see. Please continue to ask questions. We will ask our panelists very, very soon. Huh? Now, for all our audience out there, you may ask, why other insurance don't cover COVID-19? Only AIA covers. Why? This is because AIA, uh, for the last 100 years, uh, we have not experienced any pandemic cases before. So our contract doesn't have an exclusion on pandemic events. It was omitted because we never thought it would come. It has never happened for the next hundred, last 100 years. We, sometimes we always joke within our, ourselves uh, from AIA guys. Uh, we are not as clever as the other insurance company. Other insurance companies are very clever. <laughs> they exclude the pandemic, you know, and not telling you up front. So now for all medical cards from other insurance companies, uh, they do not cover COVID-19. Some insurance cover, but they cover very, very limited. So I'll show you uh, three of the insurers, uh, the biggest insurer that actually covers COVID-19 uh, 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 coverage, but on lim very limited uh, uh, insurability. So let me just show you this. Right, so let me just find it. Okay, this is a tree. Uh. So for all our audience out there, you use your imagination. Uh, just see AIA is AIA. Uh. Company P, you guess. Uh, com what is company P, okay? You just guess yourself. Uh, hey, what is the biggest company P? Uh? Company G, you guess. What is the biggest company G, okay? Company G is the one with the lion one. Uh. Okay, so if you look at it, uh, AIA actually reimburse all private hospital treatment costs up to annual limit. And we have no maximum claim limit. That means uh, we don't limit how much. If like your friend Nick, he has an AIA medical card, right? 260000 we will pay. No issue. Okay? And we don't have a limit on coverage. Means we mm -hmm. can go on and on forever. Now, for company P, the reimbursement is up to 5000 for category 3 only. Nick, your bill is 20000 and you are the lighter one, right? This yeah. is only covering 5,000. Category 4, like your friend, 80,000, they only cover 15,000. Category 5, like your friend, 260,000, only covers 20,000. Very limited. Some more, they want to put a maximum cap of 20 million for all their clients uh, in Malaysia. Means, after 20 million finish, uh, no more. Uh. That's it, you're on your own already. And after 31st of, uh, 30th of September, no more coverage. Company G is even worse, 5, 15, and 25, but limit to only 1 million, you know, for the 4, 5, four, five million, uh, uh, what do you call these uh, uh, clients that they have. So their coverage is very limited. So for, for AIA, we are a bit, we are actually better because our policy doesn't limit. So AIA is still the only one that covers full COVID-19 coverage for vaccination to COVID recovery, okay? So our medical insurance covers for more than 1.5 million annually and we have the best network of private hospitals as panels. Now the very important part is the claim management. If your medical insurance is with gratitude with us, you know, you, you may have, uh, you have May and her team, our May Wong and her team actually helping you all the way stress-free. You don't have to worry. Nick, did you actually worry about your claims all the while? No, not at all actually. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Huh? Not thank at you, all. thank you. You know, we are more than happy to help you, you know. So if you don't have a medical card with AIA, all your medical insurance with AIA is very old, say 5, 6, 10 years old. It is time to change it to a better medical card. Now, I will urge you, call the life planner, the insurance agent that invites you to this webinar. You know, just leave him a note and, or our advisors will actually call you back. Our advisors will call you back and, and we are more than happy to show you a new medical insurance or help you upgrade your current medical insurance and cater to your needs, okay? 
I have last two things to tell you. Number one, the promotion for this month is one month premium waiver for a comprehensive medical insurance. So if you pay, take up a comprehensive medical insurance this month, you get one month waiver. Means you only pay 11 months instead of 12 months this year. And the best of all, we give you a free COVID-19 diagnosis cover. What is that? Meaning once you are diagnosed of a COVID, uh, once you are diagnosed with COVID-19, right, even home quarantine, uh, we give you a thousand ringgit. Absolutely free. This coverage is free. You don't have to buy one. When you buy, when, when you go on with a, a, a medical insurance with us, we will give you free. So let's answer some questions, right? There are like tons of questions for you, Nick. Oh, okay. Uh, Vincent, can you highlight all of us, Vincent? Okay, all right. So we have tons of questions. Uh, I can see so many questions. Uh, okay, let us go to the top and, and start now. All right. So Leong Game Man, say hi, Nick. Leong Game Man is hiing with you. <laughs> <laughs> hi, King Man. Okay. So now the first question is from Siti No Amira. May I know document needed other than the original receipt from hospital? May, can you take that? Can, uh, may I know the document needed other than original receipt from hospital? Like the original receipt is compulsory, then maybe the report, uh, no need to original is okay one. Like the blood test and all the result, no need original also can. So, so like the official claim form receipt, also, right? Yeah, with the claim form. So basically three things we need from you, a claim form, all your blood tests, all this result report, you did in the hospital. Yes, and the all, right, right, all the report, a claim form, uh, blood tests, uh, all the blood tests you have done. And also the last one is the original receipt. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. Lee Choi Ngo asked, uh, asked you, May, is there any vegetarian meals provided yeah. by Mike? You can special request. Well, I can special request one. Uh? Uh, yeah. Can I order like uh, beef wellington? Uh, cannot. <laughs> cannot all right now uh the other question so the question from nor fazira Faz fazrina is this uh, hi so does that mean we can only claim covid 19 hospital business bill via claim submission only fine claim me no, okay i answer that for you huh no, yes no. Uh, for all COVID-19 policy claims, right, in the AIA, uh, it is a file and claim. Means you pay first, then claim later. Now, if let's say uh, you have a friend uh, who, or your parents or, or, or your relative who has a medical insurance with AIA, the bill is very big, like 260000 How many people can come up with 260000 and pay it off? Right now, what we can do for you, if you have a problem, call us. What we can do for you, we can do claim by stages. Means the first... 10, 15 days already, you put out 20,000 already. Bring the receipt in, we, sub, we submit it, and then we pay it out. Then you have follow up, then you have another 10, 15 days, then bring in and we, we put that in and, and the, the, the bill is paid out. So that can be arranged, right, May? You don't have to wait for the whole bill to come in. We can do it by stages, okay? Now, um, so, uh, Muhammad Hafiz asked, uh, uh, can COVID patients choose to, hosp to hospitalize at private hospital? Nick, you did choose so, you did choose for private, right, Nick? Yeah, immediately just went into private hospital by myself. Why not you go to Maibs? Why don't you go to government hospital? No, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> huh? So well, wasn't my choice to go there. No, no, no way. <laughs> you know why? I think I told Nick, uh, your medical card can handle. Just go private. <laughs> <laughs> So Nick just went private. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, okay. So there's another question. Uh, Hi, May. He, Maggie is asking. Hi, May. You were in if you're in a government COVID-19 center, can you claim an AIA medical card for those days at the center, like daily allowance? You know? The daily allowance, I, in my age, I cannot claim. Because if you're in Sungai Bulu Hospital, you can claim. Different, this different thing. Ah. Uh. Uh, can you see, Maggie? If you're in MIPS, right, it's not a hospital. You cannot, oh, daily, hospital. Daily, you cannot claim daily yeah. allowance. But if you're in Sungai Bulu Hospital, it's a hospital, you can claim that. I yeah. hope we answer your question. Okay. That one also is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Another question. Uh, let me just pick up a question. Now. Okay. Okay. 
Wow, I have a, we, we have one Mutalib asking a very uh, technical question. If customer admit to government hospital for COVID-19, okay, and the policy got hospitalization allowance of 200 ringgit, does it mean that the total will be 100 plus 200? Uh, actually, in you admit to the hospital, we just give the allowance hospital. Because right now, uh, in no more really, if like my case, uh, just for the claim, no more already. For just only in government uh, allowance, only we can pay for 200 if you're in Sungai Bulu Hospital. Hmm. If my totally don't have ready for this type of benefit. Ah, my aid don't have already. Uh. No okay. More. So, if you guys have any more questions, please come in. We can answer them for you, right? So, Nick, I have one question for you, Nick. Now, while you're in a hospital, right, you see so many people around you, you know, uh, who are, you, you see some of them are on uh, ventilator, right, Nick? Right? Uh, actually, we don't see anyone because we are all in the isolation. They call it, COVID is the isolation one. Individual, so individual. yeah, you they allow you to walk from the emergency to your ward. Once you get into your room, you don't see daylight. I mean, you can see daylight, but you practically don't see anyone until you discharge. And even if the people will come in, you don't know which nurse is it because they are all in PPE suits. So you okay. can only <laughs> you see a blue yeah. person, uh. You see a blue person, yes. Now, Nick, <laughs> just one question. Now, your friend who actually, you know, category five, two hundred sixty thousand yeah. done. You know, yeah. at that time, uh, uh, did you call him? Did you have interaction with him? How is he? How is he doing uh, now? Yeah, after we have a the... chat group, so we chat in the chat group and uh, things like that. Uh, it's much better. Uh, after he discharge, um, with I think even the the lungs, uh, they're getting better as well. So it lost quite a lot of weight. So it takes a bit of time to probably get back to uh, to his original shape, but he's in good spirits. Okay. So did he suffer any organ failure after that? Uh, luckily, no, but of course, uh, the lungs has uh, quite a, mount, a vast amount of uh, lung scarring. Oh, okay. it means his lung function is gone. Uh. Yeah, lung Basically. function was quite bad Yeah, for some time. But I think when he, uh, during the time I was discharged, it was really getting much better. It was probably about 70-80% uh, healed already compared to the first when he was there. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, May, just for the audience, uh, once, if let's say my question for you, May, if let's say once... I'm diagnosed of COVID-19 and I recover. Can I buy a medical card straight away, May? Not after maybe six, so six months or if not, it's now in category uh, one. Maybe after one and the two months plus, you can try to apply. So basically, it's about three months. Uh, yeah, basically. Uh, yeah. So if you're category five? <laughs> you must see the report after six months. Hmm. So my answer to you for that, right, if I would uh, to, to answer this, uh, if you're a category five, right, chances of you getting a medical insurance uh, is quite rare. Uh, yeah. Because why your lung is scarring, right? Nick, as you say, the lung is scarred, liver, uh, all the functions is haywire, you know. So if you have time and, and, and now you're healthy, right, it is the best time to actually go in and buy a medical insurance or upgrade your medical card straight away. So it is always uh, wise to do that. So let's just check whether we have other, other questions uh, from the top. Right, you guys can ask questions. We have, we have been ask, uh, answering so many questions. Now, before we go on to the next question, Nick, you have anything to say to our audience or not? What, what actually to actually look out for you know, when you are, uh, are COVID-19 positive? What um, should you do to prevent, to prevent it? Uh, the preventing is, I think, by now only vaccination. <laughs> but once you already get it, yeah, just have the few things. Remember the oximeter to uh, measure your your blood oxygen level. Can I drop uh, below 97, 98? Uh, can I go below 95? Sorry, it has to be 97, 98. Uh, take a constant, uh, what do you call that, temperature checks. And also uh, take a lot of supplements. Uh, uh, they gave me very high doses of uh, vitamin C as well, even the sachet ones. So yeah, do that regularly. Okay, it does help, right? Vitamin C. Now, Nick, yes. do you have the oximeter with you now? Uh, I have it. Yeah. Can you grab it and show us what is the oximeter? 
Yeah. So while Nick go and grab the oximeter, right, Vincent, can you show us, can you put out the feedback form to all our audience, uh, since everybody is here, can you put out the feedback form to all our audience so that they can give us a feedback, simple two or three questions, uh, two or three things to feedback on and then so that you can help us to do this webinar better in the future. Vincent, can you do that? Put out the feedback form. Right, Nick, can you show us the oximeter? This is uh, <laughs> it bright. So, what does it show actually, Nick? An oximeter? Uh, okay, it has this thing called the SpO2, which is your blood oxygen level. It has to be uh, above 95. We can't see it now, but the light. Uh, mine is about 97. Yeah, so it shows the amount of uh, they call it a blood oxygen level. Uh, it's called the blood oxygen level. Uh. Yeah, so Vincent, can you put up the, the, the feedback form, you know, for all the uh, our participants to, to help us to fill up so that we can do a better webinar. Now, Nick, after 95, what happens? After the oximeter dropped to you know, 95, what happened? Um, 95 is still okay. If it drops uh, below 90, then you have to they have to actually look out. The severe cases, uh, a lot of people, they, when they start to have to go on the machine, uh, below below 90, I think that the doctors will, will look at you very uh, serious. I have friends who drop until 70 and they need the, the, the highest level of oxygen. Wow, drop to 70. Uh, that's, uh, 70 means you, you, need some, you need oxygens already, right? Yeah, they, have, they need to put on the oxygen mask first. And if that fails, then they will have to put them in an induced coma and put them in, uh, uh, what do you call that? The uh, intubation. That is, that is uh, stage five. Okay, so now, so just to all our audience out there, right? So when, when we leave the, the webinar later, when we end this, right? The, the, the feedback form will pop out. So if you can, uh, help us to fill up the feedback form so that we can do webinar to enrich your life better next time, okay? Now, uh, uh, Nick, do you know that, uh, how much it costs uh, for a ventilator? Uh, the doctor told me as long as you are in ICU, uh, the cost can go up to about fifteen thousand per day. The cost is about fifteen thousand a day. Yeah, fifteen thousand per day. Yeah, ten to fifteen thousand per day in the ICU itself. So I think that will include uh, the, the severity of the case. You know, recently we donated a hundred thousand worth of medical equipment, uh, with the help of a bunch of businessmen, right, and uh, to Sungai Buloh Hospital. Do you know how much is a ventilator one unit? The ventilator is about the size of a small printer. Huh? Mm -hmm. This size only. It's 29,000. One ventilator, 29,000. That mouthpiece uh, that attached your mouth to mm -hmm. the machine uh, is 280 ringgit per piece. And that mouthpiece, uh, once you use it, you have to throw away one. You cannot wash and then give it to another guy. Uh, <laughs> right now. Yeah. You cannot. You know, it is crazy. It is so expensive to actually do that, you know, the mouthpiece, everything. So recently we did 100,000 of uh, donation and hopefully we're going to do a, another batch to Sungai uh, Hospital Kajang la later on, okay? So anyway, it is pretty interesting uh, uh, to, to, to know that it is actually quite costly uh, to actually treat a COVID patient. Uh. Just imagine 60 days, 60 pieces of ventilation. The ventilator needs to be serviced. It is expensive to treat a COVID patient. So it is not easy. The government hospital is right at the brim. My wife is a ho Kajang Hospital medical doctor. Crazy. The, the, the amount of patient that comes in uh, that needs ventilation is crazy. Okay? So, now, uh, May, before we end the webinar, do you have any things uh, to actually tell our, our audience? If you get back, uh, once you get COVID-19, what else should you do? What could you do to make yourself better? Be Louder, positive, you be happy you, huh? every day. <laughs> then you will recover soon. <laughs> Correct or not? Every day, right? You yeah. recover soon. Ah. Okay. So to all the audience outside, right? If you are listening to this webinar, you 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 understand one thing. You know, uh, be sure of one thing. If you have any problems, please do call. Give a call to all anybody who actually invited you to the webinar, and uh, to your agents. You know, we are always here to help. Our core business is to serve you to make sure that you are well served, right? Uh, I just got another friend who actually told me, 
the, 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 the mother's claim in, uh, with, a, with, a, with the insurance company was not approved. I just gave him some tips how to get it done and then now he says it's approved already. So I just got it from an SMS. Oh, Mr. Mr. Mock. <laughs> but anyway, this is what we can do for you, you know. So Nick, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, we are closing our webinar. It's nearly one hour already. Thank, thank you for much. all the audience, uh, for all the participants who came in. Uh, let me just check the list. Is there any more question we didn't ask, we didn't answer? You got one or? There's still one uh, question. Uh, actually, that is done already. All answered. Uh. All answered already. Okay. So, thank you very much for all the audience, you know, for all these people who came in and, and watched the, the webinar. I promise you, next month, we'll try to do better webinars, better setups, so that we can improve your life, give value to you, and add value to your life. Nick, thank you so much for coming in. My yeah. heartfelt uh, 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 thanks okay. and, and sincere appreciation of your time of coming in, Nick. You know, Nick, when everything is over, right? When when bars are open, restaurants are open, <laughs> let's go out for a few drinks. But this time, sure. make sure that we wear masks. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> After vaccination. After vaccination. Nick, when are you getting your vaccination, Nick? Soon, very soon. In a week or so. In a week or so. May, when yeah. is your vaccination? Not sure yet. Maybe end of, uh, next month. You next uh, July. Month. So for all the audience outside, remember, get vaccinated. Okay? Get vaccinated. So thank you for coming in. So when you, when you log out from this yeah. webinar, you will see a feedback form in front of your screen. Please help us to fill a feedback form. It helps us to bring better webinars to you next month. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for coming okay. in. Okay. Vincent, please take over the webinar. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, May. Bye. Bye.